Well, Italy, with Italy being rocked, it's yet another high-profile scandal. We tackle an age-old topic of betting and football. And why is it such a problem? Can it be fixed? I'm Redbeard. This is Targo. What's up, guys? Join us as we tackle this week in football. This is an all-new episode of Bruising Banter FC, and it starts right now. What up, man? How's How it going? You? Doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm very excited for this beer I got in front of me. So what oh. are you drinking? I'm not drinking a beer. I'm drinking some screwball peanut butter whiskey with Ooh. cranberry juice. I call it a PB&J because it tastes like peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter 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 jelly with a baseball bat. Yeah, we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to do it. Someone says peanut butter jelly. I can't not do it. So uh, today I got another one coming at you from uh, South Carolina Sweetwater Brewing Company. This one's extra pale ale. Four twenty. Four twenty. Is there something extra in that beer? Uh, it's the it's called the OG pale ale for them, I guess. Um, fresh, flavorful, well balanced every time. If you know. You know. Oh, I don't know. So let us know. <laughs> How is this pale ale? I'll be honest with you. You know when you go to drink and you breathe in the, the air from it? I like guess, right off the yeah. bat? It tastes like like that part tastes like an IPA, but when you taste it, it just tastes like a nice, crisp, refreshing pale ale. Like not an IPA at all. Smells like an IPA, but doesn't taste Smells like Smells like one. an IPA, does not taste like an IPA. Uh, 7 out of 10. Would drink 7 out of 10, okay. And I will I say like I've had can, this though. before, but I did not remember what it tastes like. So you, you can guess on when I had that. Had but too many anyway. of them, huh? <laughs> <laughs> A few, yes. All right, Targo. Let's get into betting and football. Because Ooh. it's reared its ugly head again. And you know yeah. what? I mean, so the most recent one, the most high profile one that we've had, you know, Ivan Tony banned for eight months for 232 counts of betting. We've also had in the past, you know, Joey Barton. Remember him? Suspended I do. for 18 months. City in player, 20, yeah. yeah, 2017 while playing for Marseille, I believe. Andros Townsend was banned for four months in 2017 as well. We have the infamous I, Daniel Sturridge banned for four months in 2020. I don't remember then, the Andros Townsend one, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To be honest, I don't either. But I do remember <laughs> Daniel Sturridge getting banned because that I do was remember like, that one, right yes. when he was trying to make a big money move somewhere and they just said, nah, we're good. And his career just went. And uh, then we had Kieran Trippier. Was banned 18 weeks in 2019, right before his move to Atletico Madrid. Fun fact. Okay. Which was like just the summer. So, whoops. Didn't hurt him at all, apparently. Yeah. Didn't get a preseason. So now there's this big betting scandal in Italy. It involves three players. We got Nicolo, was it Fagioli? Fagioli, yeah. Fagioli. We got Sandro Tonali and Nicolo Zaniolo. Yeah. They're all a part of a massive betting investigation. Uh, the uh, prosecutor in Turin and the Italian FA inquired about this and started the whole investigation last June. And this case really comes down to two things. First, a soccer player can't bet on soccer games in general. Duh. There's that. You know, kind yeah. of the main one. And then... Uh, Article 24 of the Italian Code of Sports states professional footballers are prohibited from gambling on official events organized by FIGC. Yeah, and UEFA, FIFA. UEFA, FIFA. Yeah. So essentially, they can't place any bets, <clears throat> receive bets, directly or indirectly. Well, I didn't know this, but in Italy, it's apparently an 18 billion euro industry. Illegal betting. Huge, man. And it's illegal. This Huge. isn't through... Yeah. And what makes it illegal is it's not through the government. It's through kind of these, you know, online Illegal betting sites. platforms, apps, yeah. sites. Yeah. 
which is it's crazy to me that it's that big. Like that prevalent what, do, too, yeah. Do do players just not know what to do with all the money they're making nowadays? I well, apparently Fascioli, he kind of gambled quite a bit of his money away. He was asking players for loans and kind of giving them shady reasons why, which isn't good. That's no. that's that's an addiction right there. And hopefully yeah, he, and I, he's getting the help he needs. I I hope so. I remember there were. I know a lot of images of him, you know, bawling on the sidelines after being taken out at a certain minute because he was afraid for his life because of his debts. But he was suspended for seven months. We'll miss the remainder of the 23-24 season. Uh, it was up to three years, but he agreed to help take part in the investigation. And yes. we get to the news that came out a, like a day or two ago as of this recording. Uh, Sandro Tonali gets 10 months, so he'll miss the rest of the season and the Euros. And so, 8 months of gambling rehab, essentially. So yeah, so Fagioli is also getting the gambling rehab. Um, and because his the reason his also isn't as bad is he didn't bet on his own teams. So I can't remember. The, I know it's Juve and I think it was Cremonese. Mm-hmm. He wasn't betting on his actual teams. He was betting on other things. Versus Tenali, his ban is worse because, well, he was Depending on his own team. Yeah, AC Milan when he was playing there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy, especially because these are two high-profile names in the Italian national team, right? Oh, yeah. And the fact that Tonali's going to miss the Euros is a big miss for Italy, especially so he, since yeah. they didn't qualify for the World Cup. He's not playing until pretty much the start of next season. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Nicolo Zaniolo... He's under investigation, but he's claiming he did not place bets on sporting events. That he was using these sites for like online poker, or, you know, gambling games like that versus betting on sports. Yeah. And so his, we don't know what's going to happen with him or if anything will happen with him yet. Yeah. And the big thing with him denying everything is he cannot be exempt from the three year ban. So if he gets found guilty and denies it, then he can get up to three years, which would be huge for a guy who's, what is he, 21, 22? Oh, man, you're asking. I think he's a little older than that. He's young, either way. But, I mean, I know he just played, like, 78 minutes for Aston Villa the other day. So, so. yeah, he's 74. 74? Sorry, 24. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, man, he ages well. Can I get whatever <laughs> he's drinking? But, I mean, the real question is, why do you think this is such a big problem in football? I have no idea, man. I'm Growing up, you know, not the richest person, I always had this whole thing of, I work too hard to gamble my money away. Me too. And so I've never found gambling enticing or fun or, you know, anything like that. Or addictive. I, I know it is out there. It is an addiction for some people, so it's... It, it is an issue, obviously, for footballers, but I just, I don't know why they couldn't, I guess, gamble on other things besides football. Maybe because they know football, so they think they can make money at it. I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I don't know either. And a lot of the problem, I think, especially with betting on your own team, is you can directly affect those bets. Oh, yeah. So. I, and you can bet on everything, like how many yellow cards get out, how many. Yeah. If there's a red card, who scores the first what, goal? What how many the outside? ball goes out for a throw in for a certain team in a certain minute? Like it, you could literally bet on anything; it's all prop bets. So, but I mean, yes, it is a pu- public thing of late in Italy, and it goes back, you know, almost forty years. But it still affects the whole of football. Uh, you think it's because players are making more money than ever? I don't know. It could be. You know, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. I think as I was I was watching the Champions League games and I was thinking, is it weird for players when a coach comes in? I was specifically thinking of PSG. But when a coach comes in, like this coach doesn't make as much as the players. Like, is that is that weird for some of these players? Like, you know, a twenty four year old who's making millions. It's making more than the coach. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, is he kind of like, coach can't tell me what to do? You know, he might think he's some big shot. Which, I, I mean, it has been an issue at PSG. the For a, a while, yeah. The, what's the word I'm thinking of? The You know, they're 
divas over there, or they think they're above them. Prima donnas. Prima donnas, or yeah, that's not the word I'm thinking of. I mean, they're not obviously because they're world class Ego. football. They're but, egos, man. Nah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, giant egos over there, and and we've seen so many coaches go in and out the door there. None of them can control it. So, I mean, I guess the biggest question before we move on to the Champions League is, can it be expunged from football? Oh, yeah. I mean, if, look at these punishments, man. They're pretty harsh. Yeah. That has a huge, I mean, if, you know, but three years as the max bet, anybody. as a max penalty, that's yeah. that's potentially career ending. It could be, yeah. I I just... I don't know if it can be expunged from football. It's such a giant, like 18 billion euros. That's a massive industry. That's bigger than, well, I would say most industries around the world at this point. It It, it I, is huge, I, but maybe it's too far gone at this point to completely get rid of it. But maybe they just need to, you know, have harsher penalties than five years. Maybe it's, if you get caught, you're out of football. Potentially, yeah, that that could be a, a great that one. Would, that would definitely, if that I had definitely... gambling addiction, I would keep me from gambling at least on football. And I'd go straight to the casino after I got done with the match. So. <laughs> Put it on Here's the slot. You'd be really good at hiding it. <laughs> one of the two, and I'm sure these guys aren't the only ones to do it. They're just the only ones to get caught right now. That is a good point. So let us know what you guys think down in the comments. You know. Is there anything they can do? Is it worse than we think it is? Is it a problem that's never going to go away? I mean, obviously, clubs are cheap. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to check out our socials. Find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Join our Facebook group. We want to hear from you guys. Don't forget to check out our Redbubble. Check out the merch. As always, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Cheers.